I believe I saw recently on on Twitter there is a a Munsters movie coming out directed yeah. by Rob Zombie by Rob Daniel yep. Zombie yep and I just want to point out that if there was ever a time to introduce a new character to the cast of the Munsters it's their wacky neighbor neighbor Rob Zombie oh. who lives down the street outstanding you know like why is that a thing <laughs> I just found an incredible review of the Charlie's Angels reboot. It's so mean. I didn't even know it existed. <laughs> I remember like hearing about it. I didn't watch it when it aired, but I I watched 15 minutes of it and was like, got it. This sucks. <laughs> I mean, have we started? I mean, I think we've started. This is technically the beginning of the episode. We've already The begun. video's just going. Yeah, man. We're going. I love it. This is organic. This is, this Nina, is Mark tell us Maron's more about I'm Charlie's sure that Angels. I cursed at some point. I'm sure I said a bad. And we That's did. okay. Don't if say a bad, did, Nina. Can, it's a fine. It's fine. Bad. It's oh, fine. Okay. So, Nina, we're, we're talking. Ooh. Tell us more about right. Charlie's Angels. Tell, <laughs> Nina, tell us about a TV and movie reboot that you think stunk or that nobody wanted. That's the name of this video. Yes. Tell us yeah. more about Charlie's Angels. All right. Um, do you, Are you familiar with what Charlie's Angels is? Do I have to explain the very, very, very layered concept to you? Explain it to me like I'm a man who wasn't roughly pubescent at the time the 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 Drew not Barrymore. just pubescent roughly pubescent vaguely there was uh, like there was never mind Please i have continue. to go throw up, i have to go throw up for like an hour we all um, do it, man. <laughs> <laughs> charlie's angels is about three uh very different extremely hot women who fight crime in bikinis and are ordered around by a speaker box that is sentient question mark it's the same voice in almost every reboot so i'm just like ooh what's going on here are they cloning it's charlie. charlie it's charlie. charlie but like are they cloning one person do they just have like a, a a robot in the back somewhere that just recites things like good job angels or i don't understand how it works but whatever it's, clippy. Clippy. it's walt disney's brain it's, it's always clippy <laughs> that's the gist and uh, <laughs> it's walt disney's frozen frozen head so yeah the original 70s version uh it was seven, it was the 70s right am i Am I correct? Yeah. 70s so, is yeah. right. Yeah. Okay. So that was a big hit. And for years, everybody's been trying to capitalize off of it. And it has not returned to TV that many times. And I think this reboot shows us why. So it in the early 2000s, it had two relatively successful movies with Lucy Liu, Cameron Diaz, and Drew Barrymore. And I liked those movies. They're campy and they're dumb, but they kind of know what they are and they have fun with it. Like the second one opens with Cameron Diaz riding a mechanical bull that and it sets the tone for the entire movie. Sam Rockwell is the villain in the first one and he's really campy and over oh, the top man. and it's awesome. In the second one, Justin throws the villain and he has an Irish accent. No reason why. He just does. <laughs> it's great. So after those were successful, they tried to reboot it on TV and they tried to reboot it with uh, Minka Kelly, who was on Friday Night Lights and uh, Rachel, ooh, I'm finding her name, Taylor and Annie Alonza, and I'm not sure what either of them were in before that, but I remembered Minka Kelly from Friday Night Lights. It is not a good show. Um, it is very clearly a cash grab. The acting is really wooden. One, a person will try to deliver a line, and it's pretty clear that it's supposed to be a joke, but then there's a weird dead silence where no one talks for a while. So you're saying <laughs> like, that this wasn't one of those like passion project, heartfelt Charlie's Angels reboots? I know, it's hard to believe, like, right? It's really It's hard to believe that the million loved. three make... Of a very popular so IP much. was, you know, a, a small indie television project. The problem with the TV show is like it, it takes itself too seriously. And this mm -hmm. show was on air at the same time as like Revenge or the first season of American Horror Story, things that are camp and know their camp. And right. I found this amazing uh, review by one of my favorite critics, uh, Linda Holmes, uh, who is a critic for NPR and hosts Pop Culture Happy Hour. And uh, she mm -hmm. called in the headline, she called it the depressing spectacle of a project no one loves. And oh. later she called oh. it uh, a dead, unloved, pre-chewed blob. <laughs> so wow. she basically was like, this has no drive, no passion. No one wants to be there. The writing is bad. The acting is bad. This is a cash grab and it should be campy and fun, but it can't even muster the energy to do that. And that's it why it's so bad. can't even bother to be self-aware. Right. It's just like what not, it, it's it's way too like, we're actually doing this. Whereas like Charlie's Angels is campy. The movies are campy. Just be camp. It's fine. It camp right. works. And this Got is just it. a nothing burger of a TV show. Who wants to talk next? I'm done. That's such Tom. a drag. <laughs> Tom. Hey, how are you? Talk to us about TV reboots nobody wanted. 
I won't say anything to you, Brian. I've heard what kind of person you are. I was... Uh, uh, okay, so there there are a couple of different ways that you can interpret that nobody wanted. Uh, the one that I picked, I, I actually, I really enjoyed. I think people in general kind of enjoyed it. I, I think um, no nobody wanted it in that nobody watched it or knew that it existed, as far as I can tell. Uh, about 10 years back, the year was 2012, there was a, a reboot of The Munsters uh, that tried desperately hard to get made. On NBC, it was uh, it was made by Brian Fuller, which makes it kind of amazing that Brian Fuller <laughs> stayed on board for the whole one episode without quitting. Oh, I was going to say one last thing about Charlie's Angels is it got canceled after seven episodes, which is pretty bleak. Go on, seven Tom. episodes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, forgot that part. Go on. So Brian Fuller is amazing. We all can acknowledge that, right? I tend to agree. Yeah, uh, but he yeah. does also have this habit of. Not doing the shows that he makes. Uh, right. The J.J. Like, Abrams syndrome. Yeah. <laughs> Start a, a show, bit. then leave. Yeah, very, yeah. very much. Yeah, over and over and over and over again. No, but he he, he managed to stick it out through the whole pilot of this show, uh, which was called Mockingbird Lane. I vaguely remember this. Oh, right. It's neat. It's impressive. The cast, uh, uh, Papa Munster, old daddy Munster, uh, this time around being played Herman by Munster. Brian, your guy. Uh, Jerry, o- Jerry, Jerry, Jerry Sliders O'Connor. O'Connor? <laughs> Is that a thing? You mean Commander Jack Ransom from the hit Star Trek Lower Decks show? Yes, Jerry O'Connell. Jerry O'Connell's That's the one. Great. Joe's apartment. Let's go. There Remember you go. Remember Joe's apartment? Absolutely not. Theaters. What are you talking about? <laughs> this was a movie they made based on MTV promo commercials about a man who l- lives with Talking and singing cockroaches. You 500 year old man. (laughs) 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 Sound in theaters. This was a Laurel and Hardy adventure. This was back in the day. You know, they used to sing that one of the early talkies. About a girl with a yellow ribbon in her hair. (laughs) Anyway, go on. Go on. Jerry O'Connell starred as Herman Munster. He did. Portia Del Rossi plays the mom. Uh, She. I can see that. Coming right off of uh, uh, Better Off Ted, so like she's in full, Great show. yeah, semi camp weirdness mode. Uh, mm-hmm. The 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 real like hero shot though is Eddie Izzard plays Grandpa Munster, and oh, it is that is pretty perfect. The yeah. creepiest performance. They 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 take it all the way from like yeah. you know the the goofy kind of Count Chocula version from the original, and they they turn the character into this. Horrifying, like he's the disapproving grandfather character who just does not understand why his son-in-law won't raise his child to be an unrepentant murder machine. Like why why he <laughs> why he's uncomfortable with his child, who's currently in the middle of like realizing that he might be a werewolf. Uh, doesn't understand why he won't teach the kid to just kill all the neighbors. Uh, so <laughs> like, and does just just a fantastic. This does job sound like it. a Brian like, Fuller joint. It really is. It's it's that kind of like half Neil Gaiman, yeah, mytho- mythology, like meets mm-hmm. kind of Tim Burton ish. It's it's yeah. really delightful. It lasts. Which is also one how episode. I would describe Pushing Daisies. Actually, is those two? No, exactly. Yeah. yeah, and yeah. like a little bit of Dead Like Me, and yeah, no, the mm-hmm. uh, kind of mundane real world meets huh. the this fantastical nightmare. Yeah. yeah, it's it's really fun. I believe I saw recently. On on Twitter, there is a a Munsters movie coming out directed yeah. by Rob Zombie by Rob Daniel yep. Zombie. Yep. And I just want to point out that if there was ever a time to introduce a new character to the cast of the Munsters, it's their wacky neighbor neighbor Rob Zombie oh. who lives down the street. Outstanding. You know, like <laughs> why isn't that a thing? Where he just shows yep. up in his dumb cowboy hat and he's like, Braves? And it's like, <laughs> like, good to see you too, Rob. You know? Like, oh, Rob's know. back. Yeah. I could kind of see him as like, he's is like the Dr. Vader, Vader character from Office Space where he's, yeah. Yeah. he's yeah, just kind exactly. of hanging out in a tank top and like Eddie Munster goes over every once in a while. Hey, kid, yeah, there's beer in the fridge. Don't tell your parents. That kind I think of Eddie Munster ask- hangs out with Rob Zombie. Yeah. We'll have to ask it's- Mr. Zombie himself. Mr. Zombie, Robert Zombie, show some Sir respect. Zombie, <laughs> Zombie Esquire, yeah. yeah. Anyway, that was uh, that was my pick. It, it it lasted one episode. It uh, it, it flopped. It was supposed to get picked up for series, but NBC got cold feet. 
And you can find this relatively easily on like YouTube or something? I couldn't find it on YouTube, but I'm sure that it's out there somewhere. All right. I'll have to track that down. That sounds pretty good. Um, yeah. There's a few on our article on looper.com that I'll mm-hmm. run through briefly before I focus on a few others. We've got a Knight Rider reboot I vaguely remember happening. Val Kilmer is the voice of Kit. I enjoyed Knight Rider back in the day when I was a young man. We've got a show called Cupid, which I never heard of. We got a Wonder Woman reboot I remember happening and then never airing. Yeah. Adrian Palacki, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Another Friday Night Lights alumna. Yeah. Yeah. I think what one of the ones I want to focus on here is Bionic Woman, which I remember Thank happening. Thank God Jesse Plemons is okay, by the way. <laughs> After everyone. <laughs> Thank God. So Bionic Woman is is a movie, uh, not a movie, a show I remember watching when the reboot came out. I think I checked it out because it starred, um, what the heck is her name? Oh, I can't remember. No. I know no, who you're the, talking the, about, though. Starbuck, right? What is her name? What, uh, in the Star- original? Mm-hmm. Starbuck from the new Battlestar Galactica was no. on oh, Katie the Bionic, Bionic Woman. Katie Sackhoff, thank you. And that yeah. was why I checked out Bionic Woman because I was like, oh, I like Katie Sackhoff. I think she's going to do a good job. And oh, is she playing like show. a side character in it? She was like the bad guy, I think. She was the, oh, okay. the evil bionic woman who the bionic mm. woman had to fight. So anyway, the show sucked and it got canceled pretty quick. Um, <laughs> Dragnet it happened like right around the here. writer's strike too, right? Like it was yeah. one of the ones that got it was, yeah. Out. Exactly. And then Dragnet is on here, a show I don't remember being rebooted, but I do remember watching the movie in the 80s starring Dan Aykroyd and Tom Hanks. So by oh, that point, yeah. were you allowed to? Were you get? Were you getting a discount at the movie at that point? Because you were already. <laughs> were sold. you angry that they didn't follow the same plot as the radio program from the 1940s? <laughs> All I can say is that gather around. What, what really made me mad was the end that they, they had a rap. No, oh, just didn't you don't stand that. for that. No, those kids. No, but in all seriousness, though, there's it's it, look it up on YouTube. There is a music video. I'm sure it's terrible. (laughs) It's Tom Hanks and Dan Aykroyd doing a dragnet rap. Wow. This has nothing to do with the show, but I'm just saying like the movie was pretty good, but then there was this great rap. Um, So there's that. Also on our list, one that I do want to focus a bit on is a show called The IT Crowd, which is a classic Mm -hmm. British show. Great show. Classic now. It's just amazingly funny. Yep. They rebooted it. They tried it out in America, off, American office style, and they recast um, the two of the three leads with Richard Ayoade sticking around as Moss in the American mm-hmm. version. And I don't remember who replaced Jen, but I know that the guy that they got to replace Roy was Joel McHale, which is right. the worst casting choice you can make. Not because Joel McHale is no good, but because He's he terrific. just doesn't feel... He doesn't fit as a like a loser IT guy. He's like right. got chiseled he's, good looks yeah, and he's a yeah. former college football player and he's yeah. incredibly charming and it's like doesn't fit as a <laughs> vaguely creepy schlubby guy so perfectly embodied by Chris O'Dowd in the original. So I watched the first half of the American reboot and it's really not funny. Oh. Who made it? Was it the same people? Possibly, I don't know. Cool. I, right. I'm not. I'm not 100 percent sure on who actually. They tried to do the same kind of thing with. Did either yeah. of you watch Broadchurch, the British yeah. one? Yeah, mm-hmm. no, but I um, should. You should. It's they, great. It's a. The first season is uh, like ridiculously amazing, and it's Olivia Coleman and David Tennant. Jodie Whittaker's also on it. Like it's got a jam packed mm-hmm. British cast, and they remade it in the states, and they put Anna Gunn in the uh, Olivia Coleman role uh, of Skyler. Breaking Bad. And then they were like, David Tennant, do an American accent. <laughs> and it sucked. It was a bad show. I probably should have picked that as my reboot, but it was really bad. And everybody was like, why would you reboot this? A, people can just watch it. And B, like, why would you not let him at least be British? He, he's so good at both being British and Scottish, like, which he is Scottish. But like his right. UK accents are perfect. His American one, uh, not so much. And it was just right. awkward and weird because everyone knows him as you know, the doctor or Mm -hmm. from being British and Jessica Jones, like he just don't make him be American. It's weird. Right. It's not great. No. And on that subject are, are to, to do a third British to American import that Mm -hmm. does not work. Rule of threes. Let's go. We're going to, this is going to finish it off. There's a show that I love a British show called taskmaster. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's the fu- it's one of the funniest shows I've ever seen. It's been very joyful to me during the pandemic, during lockdown, during dark times. You throw on Taskmaster, most of it's on YouTube for free. It's so funny. It's hosted by Greg Davies and Alex Horn as his assistant, mm-hmm. who's actually the show creator. And it gets five British comedians or regular, just generally like personalities, uh, famous personalities in, in the UK to do dumb stuff. And they compete on who can do the best dumb stuff of what's in front of them. It's so funny. So I was excited to see that there was an American version. I made it through about five minutes before I turned it off. Uh, they, it's an all-American cast of, of personalities. They replace Greg Davies with Reggie Watts. Right. Doesn't work. Alex Horn yeah. is there again. He created, he helped create the American version. I read that apparently this show got canceled within the first 23 minutes of being on TV. Nice. It is. Oh, wow. It's, it's wild because this is a show that has been exported to various minutes. countries. There's a New Zealand version. There's, I think it's in various European countries. And for whatever reason, they tried it in America and it just was immediately like, this doesn't work. And it's a bummer because it's one of those things that should work anywhere if you get the right people. But it's there's something about when, <laughs> unless you do it right, it's hard for uh, Americans to to capture the essence of what makes a British show good. Like even the American yeah. office, one of the reasons why people love it so much is not because it replicates the British office. But because it much. doesn't. It got better once it stopped trying to do that. Right. Yeah. But it does. It just doesn't. It just, American Taskmaster just didn't work. I'm sorry, guys. I'll give it another try. I'm sure there's something in there that's good. But man, oh man. I that's believe some you. rough stuff. I uh, believe you. But anyway, you kind of need out somebody like snotty Master. and up their own butt yeah. to, to be the guy that's in charge. And Reggie Watts didn't really have that. Like, yeah. Reggie Watts I like doesn't Reggie have Watts that. A lot. He's, I think he's, I he's think great, he's but he's not right for the role. No, I Reggie thinking, Watts is like fun and approachable. That's a very bad casting. <laughs> who yeah. I think would be really good. Two two people come to mind. One is Dave Attell. Okay. As just like someone who sits on a throne and angrily makes yeah. people do things that don't matter. Yeah. And on that same note. Mark Marin, you know. Oh, you know. Ooh. See, I, okay. So I kind of thought Mark Marin too. Mm-hmm. I, I I hesitate to bring it up. Chevy Chase. Ooh, right. Chevy Chase. Ooh, like, two on the problem, nose, baby. I know it's a tough. <laughs> well, here's sell, the problem like, with that. Here's the problem with that. And I don't think anything I'm saying is going to be libelous because it's pretty well documented. Let's find out. The whole point of Taskmaster is to pretend to be an a hole. <laughs> Yeah, and Chevy Chase yeah, is famously and notoriously I'm no, just saying, like, said it, it, to be. I'm not trying to pigeonhole yeah, him. I'm just saying, difficult. like, he's got practice playing this character. <laughs> yeah, let's not torture uh, the rest of the cast with his presence, please. Hey, you know what? <laughs> Twist on the subject Dan of Harmon. Chevy Chase. Yeah. I was going to say Joel McHale. Oh yeah, that works. Put him in there. there yeah. let's do it. We figured it out. Call me, Alex. Call me, Alex Horn. I'll help you develop the American version. <laughs> this one's lasting 24 minutes. We yeah. keep this up. <laughs> 800 more and reboots. We've got a full season. <laughs> Perfect. Thanks for watching. Please hit like and subscribe. <laughs>